spoke about your identity, we spoke about uh, region. Uh, now it's time to speak about your global visions. The invasion of Ukraine represents the most serious breakdown in the international order in several decades. And Russia's goal is to break, uh, apparently, the world order that it uh, considered to be under American domination and uh, Russia seeks to create a multipolar order. How do we see the world order at the end of this war? Which elements for you can be structuring democracy again against uh, illiberal regimes, China against the United States? Uh, we discussed here a lot about that. The industrial north against uh, the global south. How will it affect your region and your country? What role for different international organizations do you see, especially, of course, for uh, United uh, Nations, the uh, Council of Security of United Nations, that is quite helpless in this war, and uh, OSCE, in which all three of you are members. What are your strengths and your weaknesses in this coming world order? For, for, for you, Mr. Vasilenko. Thank you. Well, uh, we think that uh, multilateralism, as our Georgian colleague just, just mentioned, is the only uh, way to, for the mankind to advance, to survive, if you will. Uh, we live in an increasingly interdependent world, and uh, even the pandemic has again showed us how interdependent uh, we all are. Uh, so uh, we, if we talk about uh, where we stand, we stand, uh, of course, for democracy, for market economy, we stand for the international uh, rule of law, international law primarily, uh, written down, clearly spelled out, and uh, that is also, by the way, a difference between the so-called international rules-based order. We stand for the international law, a law that is written, that is agreed upon by everybody. But we also uh, stand for the international uh, cooperation. And um, when we talk about the UN, I, I guess I'm reminded of the quote by Churchill about democracy being the worst uh, uh, form of government except for every other that the man can has tried. The UN too is not perfect, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, that's the best institution that we have had for the past uh, 77 years now. And uh, we need to maybe perhaps reinvent the UN, but we need the UN, we need to strengthen the UN. And likewise, we need the OECE as a platform that uh, has been instrumental in almost 50 years of its existence. It is going through a, also an existential crisis right now because of the breakdown of communications between the West and Russia on that platform as well. But we, uh, as a country that in the past chaired the OEC in 2010, brought together all leaders of the OEC uh, participating states to Astana, where they recommitted themselves to the vision of a united, indivisible, Europe, Atlantic and Euro-Asian security. Of course, uh, that vision is now, has been put aside, diplomatically speaking, unfortunately, but uh, we think that institution too has not uh, gone out of its sort of lifespan. It, it needs to be supported. We want to support it and we will, con we will continue to support the OEC. Thank you very much, Olga, for your country. I'd certainly um, echo uh, the colleague here and the need for effective uh, multilateralism and, and how we all need to, to work together on, on various um, platforms. And one thing that w w made me think when you mentioned the pandemic, pandemic has also uh, taught us that uh, nobody's safe until everybody's safe. And I think this is currently what we're talking um, about in Europe when, uh, when we're all faced with, uh, with the very negative, uh, negative uh, effects of Russia's aggression against, um, against Ukraine. So in that whole multilateral architecture of the world and, and, and Europe, currently there is this emerging European political community, which uh, Moldova will be uh, hosting um, in June, uh, originally the idea of uh, President Macron, now the debut meeting took place in Prague um, in October under the auspices of the European um, Council. Um, so this is yet another platform to consolidate dialogue at the, the top level between uh, European leaders 
um, and see how we can strengthen our collective uh, security. Thank you, Olga. Vice Minister Dersalia, you started to speak about multilateralism. Have you something to add to global vision of Georgia? Yes, uh, thank you very much. As you mentioned, I partially actually answered this question, and uh, we strongly we believe that we will have back the international community based on uh, uh, we will have rules-based international system again. Uh, we will have where the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the countries are respected. We are uh, democracies, governance is the. Um, uh, is the, we are the human rights issues are uh, the priority. We really hope that we will help back this international system. Uh, and uh, and within this, uh, from the Georgian perspective, we believe that uh, uh, the, the problems of countries like Georgia, of um, our size, uh, uh, and that the, again, the size or geographical location will, will not be the key to uh, decide, uh, uh, or geopolitical environment will be key to decide to which part of the world countries belong. But according to democracy, human rights, uh, uh, respecting the international rules will be the key. The, uh, where the countries are. And that's from Georgian perspective how we see it. But we really hope, and I hope that it's not wishful thinking, that uh, we will have the international system back based on the international rules, based on the Helsinki uh, principles, uh, all the principles of international law which we built after the Second World War, which is significantly challenged today. Thank you very much, Mr. Dasalia.